20 seconds. Hello everybody and welcome to the Stephen Allison podcast. This is the second podcast I've recorded today and the other one you will be getting maybe Saturday morning, maybe tomorrow morning, depends how this goes in all honesty. Um, it might go up tomorrow morning. It's actually on YouTube right now, it's just unlisted. I've, I've sent it to a couple of family members. That's because I've uh, I've done something with my granddad, so uh, I'm, I'm really excited. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. It's about an hour long. We cover everything from the Babes, Munich. The Trinity, we, he's obviously a big fan of Rude Van Nistelrooy, which I didn't know, um, and all the rest of that shit. So, uh, me and our kid, what is happening with the world? We're going to get into some of your questions in a bit, ask for some on Twitter, and we'll get into those in a minute. But, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. So, we give away a PlayStation, and this is the guy that won the PlayStation. So, I hope this works. <laughs> I, I don't, I, oh, let, let's fucking see. Here we go. Thanks to the Stephen Nelson podcast. Did that work? You guys are gonna to have to tell me in there. In fact, you know what? I'll be able to put the um, I'll be able to put the sound on there in a second. Uh, that was a guy that won the PlayStation Four and a copy of FIFA Seventeen, uh, and you guys can win something else as well. We're not ready to launch the new competition just yet today. I'm just gonna check it. Yeah, the sound worked. Happy days. Um, so you guys are gonna be able to win something else. Um, but we're not ready to announce what that is yet. So how about hold on to your knickers a little bit, and we'll tell you next week. So yeah, that was the uh, that was the, the lucky motherfucker who won it. Um, there's only about forty of you entered, so it's your fault for not fucking entering, isn't it? Exactly. Right. Should we fucking talk about last night then? Or what? Do we have to? Fuck me. It's a bit uh, of an anti-climax, wasn't it? Why can't we just take chances? But... We didn't create as many as we have been doing, though, have we? There was a, we had 18 it, fucking shots, didn't we? Can we get the fucking stats It didn't feel like it, did it? Can we get the bleeding stats I up? mean, Matt, Matt has been culpable now in the in the Stoke draw, isn't it? And yesterday's, oh, yesterday's well. mate, was so close. I was already fucking shit. Travis, stop telling me to swap swearing, you absolute fanny. Um, <laughs> we had... 16 shots, 6 on target, 6 7% possession, 500 on yeah, passes. I mean, they, they were ne- the thing that pissed me off, right, is be- is the fact that why is he playing an old in midfielder at home to them? You want to rest Carrick, give him the opportunity to recharge his batteries ready for the second half of the I think, season. I think that maybe he expected a little bit more from Hull in terms of how they was going to come at us. Really? Maybe. The, the bottom of the league and they scrapped I, I know, every point. Yeah, but look at their results since he's come in, that silver fella. But they got bummed by Fulham on Sunday. Yeah, well, I don't think they, they put anything out for it. I think they was they concentrating they, more on what they can do in the league. Yeah, obviously, but they've well, they, they haven't got. I don't think they've got the luxury of not being able to play out an half decent mm. team. Well, either way, or, well, <laughs> someone said should have said it was an improvement on uh, last time we played them. They fucking beat us. <laughs> <laughs> but they, no, the, the amount of piss that was boiled last night. Fuck me. People are like, get rid of Jose, get rid of fucking Pogba, uh, haircuts and dabbing and fucking dancing and yeah. And, Jeez, yeah. I mean, all right, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe comes, but fucking hell, he trains for a couple of hours a day. He, and he, he likes to dance. You can't, you can't say he's not. He don't try. No, he's not not trying. Some of the balls that he was playing, actually, Pogba created three. Uh, real chances yesterday that other fuckers didn't capitalise on. He could run three assists yesterday and then he'd be like, so fucking what? I mean, there was... I like the balls that he plays from deep. They're excellent. They're not They're not oofs. They're long passes. But, that, they're fucking yeah, but that, that's accuracy. why. Why do you need someone holding against them? Like, no, he didn't. Obviously, he obviously swapped it half-time. I was happy with the half-time change. Yeah, I was, but at that point, that was probably too late. Wigan went like this, though. If Fellaini doesn't nod that in... One minute yeah, before half be, time, you, you've got an exact, exact game. Same. Like, yeah, but if we get an early goal yesterday, I mean, referee was fucking dog shit. I, I right. don't want to pin it on shit refereeing because I think we're better than that. We've and ultimately you can't keep going referee, 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 referee. You've got to be good enough to be able to put the result beyond doubt and fuck the referee. And we had enough opportunities to do that yesterday. The one where Rashford pulls it out, his first oh. touch is he's <laughs> out of this world, and then the shot is fucking. They're panicking, aren't they? Oh, just. Rashford yesterday, actually, we're a bit 
low down now. Let's uh, there we go. That's better. Rashford yesterday shown flashes of fucking genius, and then flashes of him being an 18, 19 year old playing first team football without that. But that's, that, but that's what you're going to do. Exactly right? what it is. Yeah. And yeah. well, Sir Alex Ferguson says you can't expect consistency from young players. Well, m- well maybe that's, that's, the, that's the one. probably the same. That's the same with Pogba though. You know, what I mean, he's twenty three. Yep. He's played. He's played at the highest level for a good number of years. Yep. But I mean, some of his two yard passing, you know, short passing was shit. Yesterday, and then he was pulling out. There's a guy in the comments here saying, "Stop criticizing every time." I don't think I don't think that's aimed at us because I don't think we do criticize. Him. I think Pog was not great this season. Yeah, last I'm... couple of games he's been off the boil. Wasn't great against Liverpool. Who else wasn't he great against? He's had a couple of games off the boil, but but, but maybe give him t- give him that ch- chance to give him a, a week off well, rather than just a midweek. What he did with Carrick, give that guy a bit of time off. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure. The amount of ground that he covers in a game, and he's a big fucker. Yeah, yeah. he's got to lump some bones around that pitch. Yeah. My throat's still killing me, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. You, it's hard, isn't it? Because you look at the team on paper and you're like, yeah, it's going to go out and no reason why I can't spank him. It's just, it's looking a bit like, it's looking a bit leggy. It needs to be freshened up a bit, I think. Do you, do you get flashbacks here to Louis van Gaal's reign? Oh, yes, yeah. Le- yesterday, yesterday's yeah. game was... Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, it was, it was slow, on it? It was pedantic, everything in the middle. Or like, we'll take a touch and then play it back. And there then, was a lot of safe passes yesterday yeah. where instead of someone going, fuck it, give me the ball. But they played exactly how a lot of the teams played against us last year. Exactly. exactly. And this is what I need answering, right? And I don't know where to go for this answer. I'm going to reach out to a couple of ex-pros that I know... Um, that are, you know, maybe working a little bit in punditry and see if they can help me answer this question because what's the textbook? Because obviously I've never been in a Premier League dressing room when there's been other fuckers there, right? I've been in a few Premier League dressing rooms. It's normally empty, right? But what's what's the crack? What, what is the plan when a team just goes, nope? What What is that plan? Now, we've seen United go long ball with Fellaini. It wasn't an option yesterday. It wasn't on the bench. We've seen... Um, but. Manchester City don't have that plan B. They don't have that lump that they can lump it up to, and no. then they don't get caught out like this. So what? And people say, oh, they've got players like Silver and De Bruyne. Yeah, guess what? We have got Mkhitaryan and Mata. Very, very similar in terms of characteristics of those players. So what is the fundamental difference between how? Because it happened under Jose. It happened under Louis Van Gaal. So I'm saying, right, it's probably not the managers. I don't think the managers are setting people out to go but, and but, impart these I don't games. Know, but is it is it the way you start and the intensity? Because if you're on them from the first minute... And we was, we was great. I think the referee really took the wind out of our sails with just foul after foul. And, and, and bullshit foul after bullshit foul after bullshit foul after bullshit foul. Fucking Tony Valencia goes shoulder to shoulder with someone. The guy can't handle it because Tony Valencia is like an oak tree. The guy goes flying, foul. Then it happens in a penalty area for United, no foul. Yeah, but that, that happens all the time though. You know where there's a foul anywhere else on the pitch, but in inside the box, it's not enough to give a penalty. Why not? It is anywhere else, so yeah. why not? I, I hate that. I hate why there has to be a difference. Oh. It was I, so you, frustrating. You, just so many fucking fouls, just nothing. No, yeah, bullshit nothing. in the middle of the park. We got to think as well. Like it'll be play. It'll be playing in the player's head. The amount of draws that we have had, uh, where games have gone exactly like that, you know, previously. Well, nine draws. So that they'll be definitely thinking about. How many it. did we have? I mean, I don't want to think back to Van Gaal's reign because this is like a marked improvement. It is on most levels, but you're gonna get, you're still gonna get that. Remember the charity shield, though. I remember coming out and we did a fan cam afterwards, and I said there was shades of Van Gaal there. There was a hangover of Van Gaal in that charity shield. There was a moment during that game where it was like, well, the, for the start of the season it was because it wasn't, it wasn't quick enough. We didn't play him with that tempo. It's still essentially Louis Van Gaal's team. <laughs> well, Mourinho's obviously learning as well because he's used to playing counter-attacking football. A lot of the time, or say say that, but you know, dominating as well. But he's still not got his plays he wants in, has he? No, he evidently has, not. He, ha- he hasn't. He hasn't. The fact that we was going for Kante late in the wind uh, window, and then also some oh, other he, fucker. Did you see him against Liverpool though? He was unreal. He was winning balls after he'd lost the ball, and then winning it back. And <laughs> like, I think he won fourteen yeah, out of fourteen yeah. tackles, and the next highest guy was like Henderson with three. three. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, he, he, he was he class. You're playing game. checkers, mate. He's playing fucking chess and Pac-Man. So, so maybe we need to play like that with that tenacity. Because I, I was thinking, as much as Herrera has been mint, because he he sets the tempo. Is he really that person who's going to take us as a team to the next level? I'd love him to be. Don't get me wrong. I like his attitude. I like his work rate. I like his nastiness. But I think there is. 
a little bit of a question mark over his quality, at least, delivering that final third. I thought he looked great yesterday when he was putting crosses in from the yeah. right wing. Oh yeah, it's got weird it's that. Yeah, very rare foot. Well, oh, got... sorry. Can we get uh, can we get five hundred likes, please, today, boys and girls? And uh, can we get uh, some shares, you motherfuckers? Share it. Get a shout out. Uh, we're on two hundred and fifteen watching, aiming for a grand. Travis, show up, you absolute fanny. I am not going to stop swearing. Fuck off. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> so, a lot. I've seen a lot of people saying like. <laughs> the reaction to it is like we got beat 5 0, right? It's, it's fucking massive overreaction. Everything's I think it's just ma- the frustration everything's, everything's coming out. a massive overreaction, though, isn't it? The, the, the frustration. Yeah, the, yeah definitely, because definitely, right. where we was yesterday, would have won, and with two points off. Yeah, fuck you. Oh, is it three points? No, three points off. Yeah, we're a win off Spurs and Arsenal. Yeah, think, something like that. And then, but as it stands now, we're five, and, it, and then it was like, but you're still six, but you still six. Fuck all that. Even if we won yesterday, we were still six. Yeah, it don't matter. Because of the even, city a, even, oh. even after this week, we're going to be... Do every time, six the guy one. behind us had um, had an app on. I texted you, then I said, uh, text us if West Ham yeah, score. Yeah, yeah. Didn't get a text. Well, I, uh, I didn't see it until this morning <laughs> either. But, just, uh... but uh, I had a... There was a guy standing behind us, and I went... Uh, every time, I turned round, and I went, Is City losing yet? And he went, no, it's 1-0. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, fucking two minutes later, City losing yet? It's 2-0. Why are you taking a fucking piss? Oh. West Ham are shit. They are shit. And then I went, a City losing yet? And he went, it's 3-0. I went, you're definitely taking a piss. And then for the fourth one, I, I got stat zone to work. I finally got some signal. Got stat zone to work. And I'm like, oh, 4-0. Fuck me. We don't do that to other Premier League teams. All right, we no. put four on the Champions, actually, at the start well, of the season. But... Yeah, but we scored four goals in a game more times already under Jose than we ever did under LVG. Under don't feel like it, does it? No, nah, which is weird. But that's the thing. It... What what do we use? Someone just put City play better football than us. No, they don't. They play different football to us. Passing it around your centre half and goalkeeper is not better football. You fucking crank. I think when they, when when it clicks for him in the final third, maybe they're in interche- they're in inter- interchanging and the the fluidity of the movement of their forward players is probably better than ours. Hmm. Because but we play with Zlatan as a as a target, but Zlatan can still do that as well. Hmm. The flip, but yeah, it's probably it's a lot smoother than ours. The transition, you would say. Alex has shared it on Twitter. I know you have because I've just got an alert. Thanks, mate. I'm going to retweet that for you. Yeah, you want retweeting? Share the podcast. Tag me. And I'll retweet you. How's that? Is that a fair deal, everybody? Let's see how many we can get in here tonight. Um, uh, everyone wants to digest it and say how we can fix I didn't get to the point of what to make, actually. So I want to I wanna speak to an ex-pro and I want to know, what's the protocol? You must have come up against this. Every well, all team, the time. All the time. Every team must have come up. Not just necessarily United. Everyone, if you played for fucking Stoke, you've come up against this when you've played a lower league team. There's always a some fucker has always come up and played with a team when they was expected to just roll through somebody, and they didn't because the team sat in front of them and just went. Meh. And how did you overcome it? Is there a textbook way to overcome it? No, the the way to play against a, a, a four four two is the is to flood the midfield either with a four five one or a four three three. So there's there's certain formations work against other formations. You're like this formation's gonna fix that formation. When someone plays four three three, you go five in the middle, and you know there's there's you know obviously not gonna work every single time, but there's there's like guidelines of if this happens, this possibly. Happens. But at that sort of level, it comes down to individual brilliance, isn't it? A moment, and that's what we lacked yesterday. Yeah, because Mkhitaryan had an off day. He did have an off day, and he was the guy that I thought was most capable. And yeah. in these tight situations. Hull actually played. Hull played a fucking high line with everyone behind the ball. How does that work? That's almost like impossible well, they, to do. Because they, they, they have no gap in between that and that that's where it's difficult to break down. That's where it's a nightmare for Zlatan. Yeah. That's where it's an absolute You've got nightmare. no one playing in between the lines. So that's where Mkhitaryan plays, doesn't he? And he drifts in and creates that space. And a lot of people saying that Jose's got some sort of rift with, with Marshall. Why? Because you read it in the press. That's literally all the reason why you're saying it. Because guess what? Marshall might have played decent against Wigan, and he did. And I expected him to play yesterday. I think he would have. If, if Phil Jones would have wouldn't have got injured, yeah, I think he, he would have definitely been. would have put an yeah. attack him. He would have made that attack in oh, substitution would, yeah. without a doubt. Uh, Travis, I'm gonna ban you, Travis. You are boring. Stop telling me to stop swearing. Um, I think yeah, he definitely would have. That was forced upon us with yeah. the with the Smalling thing. I I think but that would you would you have thought then. Because, I mean, his substitutions have been pretty decent of late. Yeah, you know, I, I'd like, give Jose f- near enough full marks yesterday. I thought he did everything. But like, like, let me go on the lineup, right? So, people are kicking off saying Marshall uh, didn't start, therefore Jose's got an agenda. Um, Bastian Schweinsteiger was man of the match, got a goal and an assist. 
Not even on the bench. Yeah, but that Bastian Schweinsteiger is a different case okay. entirely. Fellaini got the first goal. Not even on the bench. I would have thought he would have put Fellaini on the bench. Let me find this stats for you. So I've seen some awesome stats on Reddit yesterday, um, which I'll probably not be able to find now, which was... Do you know? Do you know what I think as well? Like we played Hull three times in a month. Yeah, they might have just found us out. There's every it, chance that that it, could have happened. It usually happens, doesn't it? If, if someone plays that team that often, Here we go. you kind of know what sort of way they're going to approach. Here's them. the stats. Um, I'll put these into my Reddit later if anybody wants them. Basically, if you look at the stats um, for all of our attacking midfielders slash wingers, you're looking at Marshall McTarian, Mata, Rashford, Rooney, Lingard, right? Marshall has had seven starts. McTarian eleven. Uh, Matt a seven, uh, Rashford four, uh, Rooney seven, Lingard four. Now Marshall's got the best goals to, uh, and to and goals and assists to minute ratio, one every eighty nine minutes. Okay, so that's a, a case for him getting a, a start. The next one is Mkhitaryan, then Matter, then Rashford, then Rooney, and then Lingard's like four times, literally four times as long to get a goal or an assist the way Marshall does. Lingard offers you something different. He's more of a defensive winger, if that makes sense. He He's put on to put pressure on everybody else. And he, and he and floats the play and His bit, movement yeah. is, is great. It's, he's, it's fantastic. Yeah, he but gets, his, his end product isn't of the level of Mkhitaryan, no. Matter or Marshall. That, that's why he's not going to get as many starts, but he's someone useful to have yep. in an overall squad. So, when you look at Marcus Rashford, eight times off the bench, four starts. Marshall, seven starts, two off the bench. Um, not in the squad three times. Uh, Rashford actually been in the squad all the time. So when Jose said the other day, and this is you got to really listen to what he says there. When he says, if you want, uh, he goes, anyone that I play needs to take hold of it by the scruff of the neck. Mm. Marshall didn't do that. He goes, and I've also got all the players listed: Mata, Rooney, Lingard, Rashford. They all need game time, right? So right. when you look at Hull and you think I can beat Hull. And actually, Rashford toasted that fullback when we played him last. I'm going to give Rashford another go against these, and I'm going to use Marshall with a bit more quality cutting inside against Leicester because that's where I think Leicester are going to do him. I think it was good squad management. Nobody looked at that team yesterday and was like, oh, no, no, I don't like that. Everyone was like, yeah, that's sounds." Yeah, should, should, there should be enough there, but <sighs> I don't know. So I don't it, think there's an agenda. Why is it only an agenda against Marshall, right? Matt was on the bench. The, the thing is, it's it's a form thing, isn't it? So we've just gone through 17 games unbeaten. There's a few draws in there, but there was a lot of wins as well. What did we win on our own? Nine on the bounce, ten on the bounce, something like oh, that? Really? I think it was. Yeah, it might not have been ten. It nine. might have been nine, yeah. All right, so there was a lot of games that we won there. There's a lot of games that were unbeaten. Everything comes to an end. You go through a bit of a patch. Look at every club in, like, everyone around us. Liverpool haven't won a fucking game. Um, there's Liverpool fans in the full-time Devils comments yesterday. I'm like, Why? have you not just witnessed your last month, you so, fucking So ba- basically, January now is um, Liverpool's where season ending. And now this month, February, is Arsenal's standard where yeah. they get knocked out of everything going. So, And they played Chelsea this weekend, I think. Yeah, Chelsea are 12 on Saturday. So that we've, I mean, we've fucked up because we could have gone level with Arsenal this weekend if we'd have took maximum points yesterday. Well, if you look at our fixtures from here on out, we, Feb- it's busy though February yeah, it's, it's busy, busy. But, that, but that's why he's got to use his squad and it's that's like, the whole point of it it's like the job centre in Clayton but like you've got Arsenal and Spurs two of the last three games of the season away from home uh, and City and City to be fitted in somewhere but that's going to get fitted into it so there's three games that, there that's a nightmare if you hit good form you breeze through and, and you cement your place but that's probably what we'll get when we get to the League Cup final if we win that which you're expected to do then especially with no Van Dijk yeah, for two, three months he's out, isn't he? So that's where, you, that's where you want to be just like bubbling now, picking up the points, not getting beat. All right, yeah, we could be closer, but we're not a fucking million miles off. We're well, not going to really, win, we're not not win the league. We know that that midfield's happy days. We know that that forward lineup of Marshall, Mkhitaryan and Zlatan is happy days. Maybe Zlatan needs a rest. Maybe we go with a different number nine for a little bit. Well, it is, he doesn't bring Zlatan off ever and he doesn't bring Pogba off ever, does he? No, Derry's definitely his favourites. Yeah. I mean, every manager has favourites. Like, if you, you're in absolute denial if you don't think that managers have favourites. They, they do, and then, but they, they can. They're the other, also the people that can win you the game in an instant. Yeah. So it's 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 like that fine balance of. And there'll be his voice in the dressing room as well. Sometimes a manager really needs to put everything into. Well, what, a player did, what like did that. Axel say after after he come on on Sunday? You see his interview. Like no, I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. No. Well, it's just with MUTV. Um, so he was like, I was on the line. I was because he was saying, well, what did you think? You know, was you nervous because it was a long time? He goes, "Oh yeah, I feel like it was an age before it was I was going to come on." And he said, "But I was online, and Zlatan just said, just 
keep it simple, stay calm. And I thought, that's they're the sort of shit that you don't hear about. The things that he's saying to the young players that are developing them yeah, and yeah, 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 bringing yeah. that squad unit. And Marshall's come out and, he said, and said, Zlatan's been giving me loads of advice and stuff. Yeah, you see... I can't imagine a better guy. If, if you're a, a 19, 20 year old centre forward, like Rashford and Marshall must just be like eating dinner, staring at him like that every day. I hope they are. I hope yeah. that he's, he's just talking but the, but the to pre- him. Yeah, but the press want him to make out it's a problem. Like, yeah. oh, you can't get in past the 35 year old who's fucking done everything. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, he's like a couple of goals up in the league's leading scorer, let alone like United's leading scorer. By, uh, but the problem is when Zlatan doesn't score, United yeah, don't yeah. score. And obviously, if you don't score, you don't win. Well, and he, games. and he goes obviously through patches, doesn't he? Where he went six games without a goal, and I was like, "Oh, it's finished, fucking hell!" And then he went and scored that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> many. So he's not scored in the last two. I don't know. Sto- actually, yeah, with, I don't know what he's. Yes, yeah, well, Stoke away and and uh, Hull yesterday. Scored, yeah, it was the last. It was last two because he. FA Cup in between that. Before that, he scored against Liverpool. Then he scored the. We get up here. His minutes, um, the minutes that he's played. Um, it's three ninety minutes, oh, right. uh, and that was Hull, Hull, and Stoke. Well, that, yeah, Hull being in the League Cup, but I, I think Hull's they told him to go out there and play within yourself. Just don't like. Remember when we well, we're about? I want to say, just look at his form prior to that. Liverpool goal, West Ham goal, Middlesbrough assist, uh, Sunderland two assists and a goal, West Brom two goals, Crystal Palace goal. The winner, yeah, it's not just a goal; it's winner key moments in the game, and that's what I'm saying. He, there is that opportunity, even if he's not playing well, because he doesn't really contribute a whole lot, does he? I I think he does, and I, but I, think I mean, you've on, got the, a, on the ball, but you see him fucking going, fucking hitting the quarterback role yesterday a couple of times. My dad was going mad. It's like the fuck is he doing there? But, <laughs> and he's got a point. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think he works best when he works. I think he's got a drift left, and he's got a drift right, and I like to see, um, I like to see Mkhitaryan come in to the number nine slot sometimes because I think he gets on the end of stuff really nice mm. and I, and I, obviously the same with Rashford when he, or Marshall when he's played on the left hand side and I think he needs to go and make like a pseudo partnership with one of the sides and slingshot them round him he comes holds the ball up launches them he can do that all day long even against the tight defences I'd like to see him work in the channels when a team collapses and you've got the two centre half two centre halves and one striker problem two centre halves two defensive midfielders on a striker Oh. Who the fuck are you, mate? I don't care if you're R9 El Phenomenano, right? You ain't getting that ball out. There's not much space behind him. There was a little space behind um, Hull yesterday, which we exploited. Zlatan had one. I, I don't know what he did. I don't know if he looked away at the last moment or he, he looked to try and bring it down instead of just walloping it. I think um, I think Pogba had an opportunity. Obviously, the, the one we mentioned before with Rashford, we had the opportunities. Matters. I don't. I, I think the keeper bent space and time to get his hand on the end of that ball because. That was in. He hit from about this far out. Fuck me. Bizarre. Bizarre. And well, also, the keepers. Keepers on average make like two saves a game or some shit like that. They're making like eight at United. But the, the thing is, yeah, everyone's like, oh, well, it's this season, this season. But we've got to be building for... Habib, next, thank you for sharing. Building for the next season. So, these results that we're having this year in the draws, I guarantee that they won't happen next year. No, I, Snapman Dave thinks that we're going to win the league next year. He's, he's talking a lot of macker about it. Well, remember when we was chatting to uh, Lee from Top Spot that time, and he's saying his mate's going to put a lot of money on United winning the league in the second season under Mourinho because he wins it his second season everywhere he goes. Point. There is that factor, and also just before we came on air, what a fucking perfect segue! Actually, he got here like one minute before we were going live. Fired. Um, so we've not had anything to discuss what we wanted to get in terms of the topics. But one of the things that I saw, Sports Witness, who are the go-to place, are saying Nelson Semedo um, deal done uh, for the summer for Manchester United. Is that the end of Tony Valencia? Don't know how I feel about that. I haven't seen enough of Semedo to really have a concrete opinion on him. So I'm going to fire up We Scout this weekend. I, I uh, can really comment either, to be fair. But I, no, because... Jose wants two players who can equally do the same job for every position. We're not, we're not far off that. But I, I think you're going to see him clear pull out players again in the summer. So you, you'd think like Damian would go. I think Damian, I think Damian Young, and I think Rooney. Yeah, yeah I think Rooney. Honestly. I think Rooney would go. I think not because of he's not going to be useful to the squad. If you could keep him around, I think he will offer something to the squad. Um, however, I think that this is also a financial decision. 
If you want to bring on... Clubs don't look at transfer fees as much as people think, right? Wages is what fucks a club up big time. So if you've got five or six players on some serious dough... I mean, I believe uh, Pogba's on best part of like 18, 19 million a season... Now, you've got four or five players on that a season. Yeah, don't matter how much money. Yeah, don't shit how, how much money. Can you imagine what the PAYE is on that shit as well? Okay. I mean, people don't even think of that shit, do yeah, they? No. Oh, by the way, there's an extra 20% on top of that. Bosh, get in the mixer. So, it's the wages people care about. So, if you've got Rooney on the on the wage bill, you probably want to get that off. So, if you could get him on a lower wage, keep him around playing 15 games a season, sweet. Bastian Schweinsteiger is probably looking at the same thing because if you clear them off, you're talking about 500 grand a week off the wage bill. That's significant till. Oh, That's yeah, bringing yeah. in big, big names. So Semedo probably won't be on that sort of cash. An old fella who will, though. <laughs> yeah. Little he's, French motherfucker. Yeah, he's definitely going to be on that. We and, was... and he, you know, if he comes in, then that's end of Rooney because Zlatan's still going to be there. So you would have thought that them two would play together up top. I don't think he'll play two up top together. I think you might see him played as a, what is a, a wide forward, inside forward, false fucking whatever but on then, the side. Well, that that will come back to my point that instead of replacing Carrick, did we get someone to replace Carrick and Herrera who can do both those jobs? Well, this is the one that I've been and then, playing then around in my head. Like, and then you'd play more in terms of you'd expect more from like Mkhitaryan and maybe Martial mm. as your wide players to also defend as well when needed to. When we bought Carrick. When we lost, when we lost Kino, there had been a couple of years of. Uh, and, oh, remind me in a second. Just say two thousand and four, right? When we lost Kino in two thousand and five, he'd been on the wane for the last eight, twelve months of his career. It, it wasn't Roy Keane. Yeah, he was yeah. a guy wearing a Roy Keane shirt. It wasn't Roy Keane, and that was because he wasn't. His, his legs weren't there. He wasn't himself. He was just fucking angry and bitter, and he just wasn't the. He had injuries as well, and he. Oh yeah, so, he had some pretty significant ones as well, and. United was fucking about with. I was going to say experimenting with, but we won't. We was fucking about. And that was the reason why we... Not only that, we, we were fucking about. And our team was shit. We was playing the likes of Alan Smith, Kieran Richardson, Bellion, Mikel Sylvester, and all that. We might, you know, individually, you go, do you know what? They're all right. But Mikel when the team... Sylvester was decent. Uh, you but when a team's filled with that, yeah, it's yeah. not Vidic and Rio, is no, it? Do you no, know no. what I mean? As a left back, he was decent. When he moved to centre half, he was a kind yeah. Of well, it's like, like it's like Rowe, isn't it? You can't put him at left back, but you can play him centre half. Yeah, he's the other way around. Yeah. yeah. So I think what you had was a, a Roy Keane that was on the wane, Fergie knowing that he probably needed to move to a, like a three man midfield system to cope with what the changing type of play was. Is moving from four four two to this four three three four five one sort of hybrid. That's where a Michael Carrick comes in, and that's when eventually a, a, an Owen Hargreaves comes in, and that's an aging Paul Scholes slots into that in a nice midfield three. Maybe Jose Mourinho is going to switch it back the other way. It maybe it, it, maybe he goes back to four four two because we've seen a lot of people RB Leipzig, Atletico, Leicester. People are having a lot of success around Europe playing four four two again. You never know what he's going to do, do you? I'd love to see four. I, I love strike partnerships. They're having a lot of success, but. Is it getting? You, you need to have that flexibility. You can't just be rigid and play one formation. Oh no! Can you fuck? No. If we've seen you don't have a plan B, i.e. Liverpool. Real Madrid are playing free, free, uh, free, free, free one at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but the, well, I mean they've lost. I mean that a lot being gets made out of that. I mean the problem is nowadays you lose one or two games and that's it. Fucking sack the manager, sack everything. It's pathetic, isn't it? Zidane went on a forty game unbeaten run and he lost two in a fucking trot and everyone's like. He's lost his touch. Yeah, get rid of the cunt. What? Jesus He's Christ. Guy won the Champions League in his first season as a manager. <laughs> first season as a manager, He's right? He's not going to top that. No. No. So He should have walked away, actually. <laughs> and then, then he goes 40-odd games unbeaten, smashing it in his second season. Only four points clear of a game in hand. Yeah. But it's not good enough. I mean, it has been out by Can the fact... Can you imagine being at Real Madrid? No. It has been out by the fact that Barcelona are having their struggles because Enrique is getting flack from all over the place because he's... There's a lot of talk that he might fucking go. Well, quite possible. Why don't you take Pep back? Well, Pep would fucking jump at a chance now, I think. I think he fucking oh, would. Do you know, is it <laughs> fucking roll there like that? Come on! <laughs> he, I saw a quote, I don't know, I think it was in one of the papers. He said, like, oh, he fooled himself into thinking he'd crack the Premier League because he won 10 in a row. Wanker. What an arrogant prick. Pellegrini did nine or something last season, didn't he? Or eight? I think but prior to yesterday's game, him and Pellegrini had... An identical record for except, the, except goals conceded. And he's got more? Yeah, he's got a fucking about 15 more. I don't think it was that many. It was like five or six, I think, more. But it, yeah, it was an identical record up until yesterday. 
spooky. And people people straight on the defending train, and you're just like... Oh, like Guillaume Balor game. No, he I didn't see him. Out, yeah, he can't he's... get out of his arse. No, yeah, he, he's licking the balls while he's taking the whole shaft as well. And he's like, any any opportunity to be like, see, I told you, Pep's the man. Fuck off. But City fans was defending him, going, the league's harder this year, and yeah. Is you also spent 170 million or some shit. And yeah, and the rest, whatever. Yeah. 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 I thought he was the greatest manager in the world. No one was calling Pellegrini the greatest manager in the world. So when the so-called greatest manager in the world takes over for him, best, he's got to have a fucking better, better record. Best ever. Yeah. He's got to have a better the, record than the goat. Than than fucking Deirdre, whatever she's called. What's she called? <laughs> Audrey Roberts. Um. Yeah. Habib, let me get on the retweet. Anyone who wants to share, share it. I'll. I'll hit you up in the retweets. Um, let me just get on these a sec. So, yeah. Like, absolute chaos. I would like to see a two-striker system come back. And I think what, what I was trying to say in a really long way about doing it is we might not replace like Carrick Light for Light. We might go with Bakayoko. There's a lot of talk about that well, guy. I was just thinking then. then and he's a combat midfielder. Would you would you not think our formation might be 4-1-4-1? Four, one, four, one? Um, who's, your, who's your one in midfield, though? That's the one. Well, well... That's that's someone who you would probably look at bringing in. You'd want a Kante like player, maybe like uh, Danilo, Danilo from uh, Porto, because he sits in front he of the a Portuguese player. And he sits in front of the back four. Look okay, how loads of you have shared at your crackpots. He sits in front <laughs> of the back four, but also he can sit, drop in to make it as the three. You know, if the fullback bombs on or the two fullbacks bomb, because I think ultimately he's going to want that to happen and have that security there. Pogba can drop in. To make a you know, and play a bit of a holding midfielder, but still have that four in there. I like him as the eight. That's box to box. He's got yeah. to have that. Well, yeah, he would be box to box. Well, maybe it might be four one one three one. Wait, hang on. You have to draw me a fucking picture there. Four one one. Is that my fucking master? Right? Yeah. <laughs> three one. Yeah. Hmm. So you play one. <laughs> What's the fucking one one? You play one. Oh, six... Just call it four two three one. Well, whatever. No, but one. <laughs> you say box to box, yeah, Pogba. Yeah, but then have a, a proper holding midfielder who's just going to sit. Well, and if you're be... playing footy manager, it shows a different mentality on the two guys that are sat there, and then it goes. Like, arr, arr. Yeah, no, but I'm just think, <laughs> talking about all the fucking logistics of the work of that, and then three there just to do whatever. Griezmann being one of them, Mkhitaryan, and well, whoever. Gary Moore says, "What about Cater from uh, RB Leipzig? Really impressed with that little motherfucker. Um, very Kante-ish in in how he, he just goes and what about most people. <laughs> well, I'm not, but he's, he's got a bit of ball playing skills about him. It, as well. What about that Idrissa Ad- 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 Gana gay?" Remember from Good shout, yeah, from Everton. Yeah. Good shout. I'm not, I'm not, although, to be like, fair. Like people said, there's a lot of... Oh, yeah, 2004. Well oh, yeah, well said, it. lad. I remember <laughs> we were sat outside it was up Sidmouth Street. Uh, we were sat in my car and we were talking about, look at the the team that we had going forward. I can't remember who the keeper was. It might have been Ben Foster. We were talking Thomas about Kuchak. how young the team was going forward. We just signed Rooney. We had, had Ronaldo being that show pony in OM product. Can you mm-hmm. remember them days? Um, about 580 goals ago. Um we was looking at the team going forward. I think Wes Brown was in defence. I think we was talking... Was he talking PK then? Might not have been talking PK then. Rio, definitely. Um, can't remember who the left-back was at the time. It's probably someone who turned out to be really shit. Really Irons? In 2004, it could have been. Mm. It might have been. He won player of the year, man. When was the last time a left-back won fucking player of the year? <sighs> fucking me, mate. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> I fucking won player of the year, left-back. Do you know I found out that Goss and Ryan Giggs are, are right-handers? No, oh, how weird's that? I but they're left footers, like what kind of fucking weirdos yeah. are left footers? Yeah, I, I, if I not that I play cricket, but if I play cricket, hang on, where the fuck did that come from? What are you just saying about right handers? But, but I would play right hand. I wouldn't play left hand. I open fucking cans with my right hand because I'm forced under the oppressive right hander regime. I still do it with my left hand. Just fucking the power. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do it like a, do it like a, you know fucking whatever. But yeah, anything. But it's weird because you, I mean, I'm like so left. It's unbelievable, but if they play cricket when you used to fuck about, play right handed. And if they play golf with a swing, it's right handed. You have to play it with golf because there's no, there's no fucking the left handed club things, there's like there's hardly any of them. It's not fucking nineteen sixty, mate. Yeah, I know, but if you go and borrow in a mate's clubs and all that lot, chances are unless it's another left hooker like us, then you're just gonna have to fucking make do with Yeah, but like some that's yeah, but that's, yeah, but that's like what I'm green green from like I played Have we told that story many times? Well what the point I was trying to make is anyway that you you're looking forward is the point I wanted to make about that story is when we was looking forward at that team, this was 2004, he still didn't win the league for another three fucking years. 
There were still other pieces of the, pi- the jigsaw coming in. I am on the fucking lead. Like, yeah. uh, like Evra, like, uh, like Carrick, like all of them guys that was coming in. So even even with Sir Alex, even with the the building blocks of Rooney, and for Rooney you might say Marshall, and for Ronaldo you might oh, you might say Ronaldo Marshall. You, you, all of these pieces that are coming in. It took him a long time to get that pedigree. And you lost the likes of Roy Keane. And you had others that needed to step up. And, and you had ageing players like Scholes. And Neville was at the end of his career. And Giggs well, Yeah, was... Neville went 2005, didn't he? What? 2005. Genev? Yeah. No, nah, it was 2011. Fuck off. Seriously, because I found some on my time hop the other day. 2011? Me and, me, and, me and Chris at FTD was arguing. Because I was like, nah, he was... He, I was like, he finished in like 08, 09. And he was like, nah, he didn't. He was like 2012. And I was like, fuck off, was it 2012? Oh, he was out for a long time, wasn't he? he had no oh, he was out for two weeks for four years, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, he, he played like 15 and 20 games in the last few years. But he was shite. He was so shit. It started because I went, Gary Neville was shit after Beckham left. Chris was like, what? He was like, no. He, and he had a good couple of seasons. Last couple of seasons, he was shit. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and he fell off rapid. And he even says himself, the last few games, he knew he was done. He knew he was a liability. Well, yeah, because he was, yeah, he should have got sent The off. post that I found on uh, on my time hop actually was, I think I said something along the lines of, um, he's been shit for the last couple of years and I've given him shit for the last couple of years. But Gary Neville is a red and I can't wait till he bounces it up when he goes on Sky because he, he retired and went straight into punditry, yeah, yeah. I think. And he did. And yeah. he's probably the best pundit out there. Yeah. He stick to that job. And developing Manchester because he's doing a sick job with that. You've seen that St. Michael's... Uh, oh, unbelievable. Yeah, He's amazing. doing amazing things for the city. I'm, I might even give you a round of applause. Go on then. I said I might. I didn't say I'm gonna. Well, I'd say I'm just debating it. Yeah. He's doing well. He's, he's doing well. And I, I, I love that the Class of 92 lads are putting back into the city in that sense. Hotel football, I'm sure they're wheeling the, the, the money out of that in wheelbarrows. Yeah, and they're getting, but they get ra- they're getting decent ratings. I've seen them share something today. It's like the 1,000 five-star rating on TripAdvisor. It's like good. second out of all hotels in Manchester. Well, it's great. I mean, it's a great view of Old Trafford as well. I mean, it literally is the best view of well, Old yeah, Trafford you could get, it's, isn't it? It's, you got to, if you want something to be yeah, so you got to put your pride into what you do, and you and the service that you provide, especially in that sort of industry. Because Food, it's like food's s- decent in the cafe. Uh, the supporters club's a great idea. It doesn't really get kicking in that supporters club, but it's still brand new. I mean, it's not even been open a year, I don't think, or it might have just been open a year, something like that. So yeah, you know, every, it's, it's like everything it. takes time, doesn't it? It's like United's team is a tra- team in transition. Jose's in- inherited the team. He's still making changes. He's giving everyone, I think, a fair crack of the whip. Maybe not, maybe Memphis and Schneiderlin, but, yeah, he, he, go, but go. they didn't, but they did. Because he's seen him every day in training. If Schweinsteiger was fucking gone. Have you, have you seen his stats forever? No. Mm, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's less pressure playing it ever, though, isn't there? There is. So it's different. Like, I never really seen him put in a performance for United. Do you remember where? Schneider... Yes, last season. Schmidfield was mint last season. I'll pull the stats up. All last right. season. So where did we finish last season? Don't matter. Well, yeah, it does <laughs> because what well, fucking Ali? You know he was. Ultimately. He was like our fourth or fifth bet according to the who scored ratings, which aren't the be all and end all, but they give you a very broad stroke of who did well and who didn't. Let's fucking get him up. Um, he was, I think, like fourth or fifth best outfield player. Histoire. Let's have a look. Last season. That wasn't last season, was it? Oh fuck off! I'm clicking adverts here and everything. What are you doing? It's like my first day on the internet. Uh, right, let's sort it by. So Luke Shaw, according to this stats, and I think you probably agree with most of these. Luke Shaw was our best player for the five games that he played. Right. Hmm? Yeah, go on. Anthony Marshall. So where's fucking Schneiderlin on that all list? Right, all right, I'm getting there. All right, you got ninth. Keep... Ninth. 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 Fucking hell, fourth. There's a big difference between that. He was the best midfielder. Well, Blint was. Oh, center center center. He's yeah. the best midfielder. All right, yeah, he's the best midfielder. But what what was our midfield? Um, M. Schweinsteiger, Fellaini. Herrera. F- I mean, Herrera got twenty seven appearances last season. Um, how many? Schneiderlin made twenty five. It's not a lot, is it? Well, I think he does a lot of the stuff that Carrick does in terms of that. He's it's the unseen graft a lot of the time. Yeah, no. Well, don't get me wrong. When he was at Southampton, he was mint. Like, you know, it was a different role. Really. I thought Jose was gonna. I thought Jose was gonna do. I, I thought I was gonna love him. To be honest, well, he's not obviously shown that right attitude and that right desire in training. Because if he has, he would have. He would have been playing at United still, and he would have been forcing his way to get in the team. Herrera wasn't 
in Jose's plans at the start. You know, look at all the players who is is like Jones, Rojo. They're perfect examples of if you were to put that graft in, where where you can be now. You 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 get it. Jones and Rojo ahead of Smalling and 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 Do you know what I mean? I get it. I get it. I mean, Phil Jones came from nowhere and has been absolutely fantastic. Yesterday uh, he was he was bursting out of defence. He was he was taking the ball by the horns. Like a lot of people, the first couple of games that he came back from his injury, people was like he was commanding, he was leading the line, and I was like, no, he played all right. Like he was people, rusty, he's rusty as well. Don't yeah. forget. But I mean, lately, I mean, he's injured now. It's probably in for the end of the season. Well, no, because it's I don't think it's that bad, is it? It's only like a, f- a few day thing. I think I, he probably won't play on Sunday, but I think he'll be fit for the week after. He runs weird, you know. I was, I was really looking at his run last night. I was like, no wonder he gets injured all the fucking time. Runs like someone shoved him out of the door. We've got Leicester this week. Yeah. Leicester away. Then it's Watford. St. Etienne, I think. St. Etienne, either side of Bra- uh, Blackburn. No, we've got Watford. When's Watford? I don't know. Watford at home. St. Etienne's the 16th. Oh, yeah, we've got Watford on the 11th. Next, uh, that's at home. Yeah, Saturday. So we got... And then it's FA Cup, isn't it? Leicester away, Watford, San Etienne, FA Cup, San Etienne, League Cup final. Busy month. And thing is, we could have done with that win yesterday, not for the fact, just because of the points would have been good, but the fact that there's going to be a weekend where we don't play. Mm. So we would have had a game in hand, plus we'd have been right on the coattails of every fucker else, and that game in hand, plus whatever. Might have actually gone up a position. Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> it's a but it's you, a great insult. You've gone look, from look, six look, to six. Yeah, but we've cut all. But look at the fi- look at the fixtures there. Though, right, so th- we're going to play ourselves into some form again. Probably not this. Probably not this weekend. Unfortunately, though, there's so many games that aren't Premier League games in there as well. Well, know. that's yeah. All right. So I mean, the next one's Bournemouth. You know, put home is that yeah, sort of Southampton win? away. Southampton away. Their season will be over after the League Cup final. Yeah, they might dip. Middlesbrough away. You've they, got to go to Middlesbrough and beat them. Yeah, West Brom at home. You should expect us to roll. That up. might be a tough one at home, Everton, yeah. but you'd expect us to do it. Sunderland away. You got to go and kick fuck out of them. Um, and then that's as far as it's letting me have on there. But yeah, May's hanging. Oh yeah, May's hanging. But you've got to do the business there in April. It's it's there for March and April. Is is like a, a tapping well, for that's, us. That's where that's where Jose is going to earn his coin. Isn't and it? this is where Europa comes back in though. And Mike Fuckers. You'd expect us to go through against Saint Etienne and you'd expect him to put a decent saying through there. Do you think I think he wants to win it, me, don't you? I think he wants to win everything. I want to win everything. That's I agree, but realistically, I'd I'd take I'd take realistically <laughs> I'd take all three cups in a top four spot. I know that's not being realistic, but you know. Uh Sonny saying involve the chat more. We do involve the chat every now and then when I notice it, but unfortunately, sometimes it it kills the flow a little bit you got to remember um as many people as are watching this or will watch this listen to it on downloads and be like mate what are you talking about yeah. ran a bit i can't open facebook while i've got this on mate so just why don't you just ask, ask your question in there you've put a thousand messages in you could have asked your question in there um so yeah throw some questions in there lads and i will answer these um what else did people, let me go and check for twitter actually for some of the questions and that people wanted us to cover um, there was loads, yeah. So let me find where my tweet was um, and then see what the replies was. Um, why can't we finish? Kind of covered that. Uh, Connor Floyd, is it really happening? I listened to Joe Rogan a lot this week, actually. He's, he's ramped up a load of podcasts so he could do the number 911 with uh, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, um, which is the most batshit crazy podcast you've ever listened to. About a two hour mark, Alex Jones starts talking about infinite dimensions. And how the elites are um, going to leave the earth, uh, live in machines uh, once they disconnect from their bodies. And you're just like, okay, I'm going to turn this off now. Yeah, fuck that. Um, but who was uh, Gary Vanderchuk yesterday was talking to him about um, Connor and Floyd. And he thinks the economics involved in it is just going to push it through. Yeah, definitely. It's going to happen. They're yeah. both talking it now. It's far too much money He's- involved. The thing is, is they're building up a fucking ridiculous hype train of it so that it breaks all records. That's You've all they want to do. Four point three million pay per views. I think they've got a hit to break. That's just in America as well. Remember, they'll do that. You you know they'll do well, that. Connor's only ever hit like one point five or one point six. Only, in, but for UFC, 
Yeah, but only. Yeah, but that's also on other cards with other fighters people want to see. That's not himself alone. No, no, but and they want a true. Uh, they want a three way split on a purse or a three way promotion. So they've offered the UFC, and I think that's kind of like so the UFC just don't block him because contractually, I think they could probably block him from doing the fight. Uh, so they've offered UFC a, a cut of the promotion. It'll be money, uh, whatever it is, promotions and uh, Merrill promotions, and also Conor McGregor promotions. Yeah. Which he registered not long ago, and everyone was like, aye, aye, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, he's, he's, he's not a daft, is he? He isn't daft, no. He's setting himself up for life. He's in Manchester this week, right? Yeah, he was at the Lowry, wasn't he? And then he was at Event City. Yeah, he's been doing them sportsmen, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, he did it. And I think it went off as well outside. Doesn't Just... surprise me. But there were, were 5,000 people there. Fuck me. It was 150 quid a ticket. I don't. Not all of them, are they? I think that was the cheapest ticket. Was it? Five thousand people. Do you get a set of binoculars as well to go and fucking like? Oh yeah, that's what they. Uh, think of the sports ones we put on. Two hundred yeah, people. Back of that room's a little bit far away, isn't it? It's not really intimate. Yeah, yeah. It was obviously on big. He was basically sat on a stage at the top, and there would have been a big screen behind him, wouldn't it? And he streamed it on live on his own channel. Right. Let's see what these motherfuckers in the comments are saying. Um, if we don't meet Leicester, top four is gone. I'm assuming you mean beat Leicester. It's not gone no, until it's, it's, not, gone. it's, it's not gone until it's gone, it's not, but we're it's making not, it difficult for ourselves every it's, week. it's not gone until about game 33, game 34, isn't it, really? So there's still another 10 games before we get to that. How can you send an image, mate? Tweet me. Um, opinion on Leroy Sane and Gabriel Jesus. Sane not really been impressed with. Jesus sit the ground running. Um, let's see what he's like. Come winter. Oh, yeah, it's winter. Um... I don't know. Let, let's you, get a full you season. Have in. That, you usually yeah. have that impact, don't you? Yeah. New signing coming in, giving yourself a lift. He's, he's done well, to be fair. Terrell says false remensa for the Kante role. Yeah, not, he's not as not quick. Yet. He's not as quick. Um, but not but yet. He, he's definitely a potential destroyer. Josie won't trust someone of a, of a, no, of, of, a no. of a position of that magnitude for someone H- without that. That's why he's only getting games at right back. Yeah, because he's not a right back. No. Uh, Joe Dawson says Joe Rogan is a don. I mean, Joe Rogan just passed a million subs on YouTube and he doesn't give a fuck about YouTube. It's, it's all about... I mean, he was talking about his... Po- he, they, I texted him the other day and said, yeah, check these numbers out, right? They got more. They've done 100 million this month. 100 million. 100 million. What? What? That's a lot of people. <laughs> that's a lot of fucking listens. Now, when you're putting that's out... More, that's more than the whole entire country. I mean... The UK. That's... Well, that's not 100 million people, is it? It's 100 million downloads. The guy's got so many podcasts a, a week and a month that go out. It mm. might be 10, 12 podcasts. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still crazy numbers. But better start fucking reaching up, out be, for a million. Better start upping your fucking content, lad. Um, Alex Jones is a shield. Alex Jones, I think he's probably a little bit crazier than he's letting on. Um, is Griezmann actually coming to United or is it all BS? Well, we started the week off, me and Adam trying to look into the facts and what's the crack about it and where did it all start and find out are we just all getting hyped up about this because his brother's a United fan and tweets about United or is there anything concrete to it and then the next day last night Yahoo starts reporting that a deal is the basis of a deal is in place like what's the basis of a deal is a contract filled in just waiting to be signed well that don't mean anything but it does seem like there's some or it also might seem like especially at the timing around about midnight last night a lot of the broadsheets pressed a button on the same sort of thing which tells me that, because all them guys in the press conference, mm. Mr. Woodward came in and was like, listen, pin them back, you set of fucks. Here's what's happening. Because that happens. Um, I, I, I've been hearing that Griezmann's come in since summer. Since while the tr- transfer window was open. No, I wasn't really seeing it then. I've so seen that, yeah. I've seen that on um, a few places. Uh, but it was not until for next summer, so I've been saying, yeah, fucking hell. I don't fully expect him to come. I, don't I wouldn't be surprised is... if he comes. No, I'm, I definitely wouldn't be surprised. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> um, what's the scouting website I use called it's called We Scout um, and if you want to pay 60 quid a month like this fucking clown um, W-Y Scout yeah exactly why why would you pay 60 quid just to go on a fucking oh, scouting website oh off you fucking knob um, my young it says oh can we give a shout out to Orange Ape actually yeah the, today I mean they're all great there's not been a bad one but today's particularly tickled me um, I haven't put it as a thumbnail on this yet. I'll do it once we stop, but check that out. And he does these with no direction, with no asking or anything like that. I think you might have done this because I said Snatch was my favourite film on uh, one of the Snapchat Q&A. Film? I think so. It's up there. It's a fucking it's great a, film. Yeah, but it's a, how do you have a favourite film or favourite song? It's fucking yeah, true. Well, Waterfall's my favourite song. 
I could just listen to it all day long. Uh, I thought you. I was going to be like, "What? Wow, like TLC?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you think I meant the stone? <laughs> um, Mary was said he, it's it was happening on Sunday morning. They all Frampton said. They all said it yeah. Was yeah. yeah but, did you watch that Frampton fight? Nope. I watched it in the morning. It was a good fight, but he, he just he didn't he, he didn't do he didn't do anywhere near enough as what he did in the first fight. So Prakash, he to lose. Prakash says, "Will Angel Gomez get into the team next year?" Do you know what? Right. One thing I've been saying all fucking season is I can't wait to see Angel Gomez step into the 23s after Christmas, right? It's after Christmas. He's not stepped into the 23s yet, but... Yeah, but there's no rush, though, is there? There isn't a rush. He's, he's literally 16, so, like, there isn't a rush. But I just wanted to know for my own, like, how does he do against adults? Playing at all his underages? Yeah, but he's probably going to rip him, isn't he? Well, Tuesday night. Um, Altrincham played United. Yeah, yeah. Altrincham men's team. Vanarama North side. They're dog shit as well. Uh, they beat United 2-1. United sort of played really nice football, but obviously it was done at set pieces. There were certain aspects of the game. I like what Kieran McKenna is doing with his team. Mm. I like how he's testing them in certain ways. Text them to indoor tournaments, which they won. Yeah. The cup was five foot fucking tall that like they won there as well, by the way. Um, taking them to go and play against men's teams um, on shit pitches in the rain and I like that I like that he's doing that Angel Gomez scores a fucking world of a goal yeah. takes it on the edge of the box beats a couple of men puts it in the opposite cheek like it ain't shit um, so that's a, a test answered um, I, I thought he had a knock um, I thought he had a knock so I, I wasn't expecting him to play so I didn't go because uh, I was like he's injured Chong's injured I was like oh, I'll just fucking sack it uh, and then he played and he scored. There, there's a few decent players down there, but you don't know what's going to happen. The, this this development stage is really tough to gauge. Gomez is undoubtedly going to make the first team. There's no rush with him, though. Iman Chong, people... I think because Tuan Zabi's made his debut, people are like, right, who next? Don't work like that. No, this, like there that. might not be any more in the first team this Nah, they season. probably won't be because that probably be the only opportunity now. Well, not just Maybe. opportunity. There was him and Goss, like, levering on a door. Mm. But there wasn't, like, a... A queue behind them. That is like that. They was the ones. Now let's see who else and comes to the top. The the. I mean, Axel. Yeah, fine. That that was. You know, he's kind of hoping that was going to happen. But with Pereira, I think he just did that kind of way to say, "Well, I fucking this is how many people I've made a debut." <laughs> yeah, maybe. Do you know what I mean? Because he he, ha- he has done that before, and that kind of gets the. He's probably got a fucking criteria from the board to say. Well, we want you to try and introduce so many. Like, it's not as critical as top four and getting the trophy and you know, getting everything back to where we want to be. But we would also like you to do this. Right, there you go. Tick. Two in fucking one game. There yeah. you go. Well, it might have been that. Or it might have been uh, because we had to cut his loan shot at Bellinenses where he was absolutely ripping it up to let um, Johnson go on loan. He, they might have rang him up like, listen, we're going to pull you back off loan. He's like, you're taking a piss. I'm playing first team here. I'm fucking learning loads, I'm smashing it, and he was like, all right, you little dickhead, what if I give you a debut? And he was like, back in my shit right now. Maybe that was part of the deal of get, bringing nah, him back. I don't think so. Well, He's... look at Axel signs his contract two days after getting his debut. Now, was that um, when he was negotiating his contract? Am I going to get a debut? And he was like, yeah, and he was like, right, I'll sign before I get my debut then. Wouldn't fucking shock yeah, me that people mm... do shit like that. That's how you force your way through on stuff, isn't it? And he's lot, yeah. He said there's lots of fucking things that go on behind the scenes that you'll never find out about. Absolutely. Uh, who was technically the better player, Frank Lampard or Steven Gerrard? The answer is never Steven Gerrard. <laughs> um, in, no matter what the question is. So uh, Frank, Frank Lampard, Lampard was uh, he was unique, wasn't he? He scored a your fucking be- of goals. Your best mate, you know. He's not my I best mate. You fucking tweeted out about him before picture. I said the guy's a jail friend. <laughs> that fucking Jamie Vardy thing last weekend was absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. mint. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean like as in proper mint yeah, I oh, well, fuck so me that time. was absolutely mint uh, Saf says Godfather favourite film I am the resurrection favourite song Godfather's long as fuck though you know but like, how but you, yeah, you have a favourite so how many times would you watch your favourite film I've watched Snatch a lot yeah but what's a lot uh, but actually I said Snatch then I, I repealed it and I was like it's probably Gladiator actually there you go you can't have like there's not one Ultimate, I don't ultimate. know. I think you get some Star Wars nerds who are like, oh, "Fuck Star Wars!" Empire mate. Strikes Back. That's me, mate. I don't watch any of them. Um, it's hard. Is dude, that it's that many f- films? Are, do you know what? Do you remember when we went? We went me and I think it was me and Farky at least. Anyway, we went and watched um, fucking hell, Pain and Gain. 
Yeah, that was good. Funniest film I've ever seen, right? Near, no, apart from Hangover. First time I watched Hangover, I, I, I had pain from laughing that yeah, much, right? Funny, Nearly as funny as Hangover, right? Step Brothers the funniest film ever, mate. That was a slower burner for me. What's Step, Step Brothers is funnier every time I watch it. It didn't yeah, go yeah. boom and then thing, yeah. It gets better. Yeah. It's like a wine. So then the thing is not the funniest film you've ever watched, then, is it? Pain but and Gain. Kane, Pain and Gain, the first time I watched it, in absolute stitches. Yeah, when he's yeah, banging yeah, her up yeah, against yeah. the car, funniest thing ever. Then I watched it with Janine, and I'm laughing my, t- my tits off, and she's like, this, yeah, but this isn't even funny. First time I ever watched Ted, I fucking laughed my tits off in the cinema. Yeah, but I still laugh my tits off. No, maybe not as as hard as like Ted. like in the in the scene where he's twatting him around the bedroom. In the- <laughs> 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 I was crying, mate. I was crying. <laughs> I was sat in the, uh, oh in the cinema, and I was looking at me like, "What the fuck is this guy on?" <laughs> I don't care. That was some funny shit. I remember laughing completely out loud. I remember we went and watched something like fucking Ghost Rider, and because uh, it had Eva Mendes in it. Every time Eva Mendes came on, someone was just shouting, "Damn!" <laughs> oh fucking hell uh, thoughts on Klopp screaming at the official guy gets away with absolute murder he just gets away with anything he wants and uh, they charged him they've not even charged him have they? Jose would have already it'd have been the next day oh, charged Jose's already, he's already fucking had his dig any fucking joke um, oh shit just missed loads of people um Try and scroll back through some of these dudes. The other side reckons it's because he's Portuguese. It might be, in all honesty. You never know. Um, CBJ's birthday today. Why didn't he come back? I, I don't know. I, I spoke to someone who has been speaking to his dad and he was like, yeah, he's coming back. He'll be back next week. That was like three weeks ago. He's not back. Fuck knows what's going on. Nigolan won't come. He won't get Nigolan. He's there 28, 29 now. <laughs> Gary says, I'd be better off not watching footy anymore. I say that every time we don't win. I fucking hate football. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Would I swap a 23 year old Paul Scholes for Pogba? I don't know. I'm interested to see where Pogba's journey goes. Even Steven Gerrard said he's got absolutely everything in his. Everything. He can do everything and he's only 23 and he goes, The frightening thing for me as a Liverpool fan is that he's only going to get better. <laughs> I, I love their record since he's gone back there. <laughs> Are Manchester United becoming a cup team? Uh, is everyone becoming far too reactionary how about was that it was a cup team in the 80s yeah it was a cup team in the 90s mm. 1990 FA Cup 1991 uh, Cup Winners Cup 1992 League, League Cup, cup. Uh, 1993 didn't probably got a Champions League um, 94 FA Cup yeah 96 FA Cup yeah I mean well we got to two finals in 95 as well and blew them yeah um, 99 FA Cup yeah 90 um, what happened in 98 Arsenal won, didn't they? They did a double. They did a double. Yeah, so, you know. What's a cup team? Um, don't think Angel will get his chance under Jose. I don't know. You can't predict that. I mean... Yeah, well, it depends because I don't think he's going to get his chance. Not while he's 16, 17. No, is he fuck? No, it, 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 like what Fergie said to Lingard, you're going to be 22, 23 before you get your chance. Yeah. Maybe that's what's happened with Angel. Players develop a different, don't they? If he, if he gets on the weights and he gets that sort of Aguero sort of using is low centre of gravity, then he might be ready quicker. But, his size is a massive factor. His size is, he can use a lot of it to his advantage. He's, he's so agile because he's light and small. And yeah, turning like, Alexis Sa- Sanchez is turning circle. He's like amazing. The way he just can just, you know, pivot and he's done. Same th- same thing. So there is a place for him there. Of course there is, yeah. And you know, and you will be, he pr- will be protected by referees. Mm. I see it at 18s already. Like, he gets targeted to fuck, gets kicked the fuck out of. But uh, it is what it is. Um, you can't bring Raphael back. Isn't isn't scary the same scenario? Spurs last game at White Hart Lane happened last season with West Ham. It's not scary. Um, it's not scary, is it? I mean, well, well, there'll be there'll be a definitive time then. We'll know whether we're in the running for it or not. How long till Trump is assassinated? I think we've just got put on a watch list for even uttering those words. Yeah. Um, whatever. Probably already on anyway. There's some bullshit going down in America. Um, I think some of it's being I blown out of proportion. I talking about it. Because it's just a fucking... It's just like every day. Leader of the free world. Go fuck yourself. Cutting abortions. Deporting people left, right and centre. The thing that I don't think people are talking about enough. And people are focusing on the fact that there's 
there's the Muslim ban. There's been no um, Americans killed by the countries that they banned, um, and they've ignored the biggest ones. But they've also not talking about the fact that the countries that haven't been banned have got Trump hotels there. Come on, surprise. What a fucking joke. You can't... I mean, it's a good he, idea he, sometimes. He tweeted, some, he tweeted some shit about Iran today. Like, what, what? why is he allowed to go on Twitter and tweet some of the shit that he does? It's frightening, isn't it? It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, Iran, yeah, we're coming for you. Isn't he busy? And he got shit to do? Obviously not, no. <laughs> He was apparently he was he did a fucking he was doing some presentation or he was doing a speech at some I don't know whatever and he was slagging off the ratings of the Celebrity Apprentice which is now hosted by Arnold Schwarzenegger like what the fuck why does that concern you you got bigger things to worry about I've got little arms <laughs> but he uh, I mean he's he, he's the son of an immigrant anyway yep he's like you know that's he's great his granddad's German. And his granddad went to go back to Germany, but they weren't letting him do because it, he wanted to do his national service. And it, shit. It's a country founded entirely by immigrants for immigrants. And what about all the fucking Native, Amer- Native Americans that you fucking and the land is yeah, you yeah. desecrated? Yeah. No one, no one ever says shit about that. Yeah, give him a casino. They put them on reservation. If you add, the more the more you learn about the reservations and the Native American slaughter and stuff that was a serious genocide but it's not it's not just it's not just in america though because it has happened like happened everywhere. everywhere i think it's British significant in america it. because it was such an empty country and they lived well, well what about australia we did the fucking very exact true. same very true, the yeah, very true and now what happens to the aborigines they they their like, reservations yeah exactly but they're put their their towns and shit like that have, you know where it's well, they've mainly, been ghettoized yeah yeah there's fuck all going on so Shit happens everywhere. Shit's fucked up and shit. Yeah. The West I can't one. believe the first thing that he did when he gets in office is start like fucking pulling executive support orders. from me. Yeah, all them executive orders. Well, I think they were the All of them was them. like, are you fucking serious? Like, that was the first shit that you needed to do. Like, you didn't, like Joe Rogan said today, he goes, the first thing I do, I'm going to run to the office and go, where's the guy with a folder on the aliens, right? That's the first thing you do, right? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And then you go, show me the other angle from JFK. Who killed Tupac? Yeah. Get the important shit out of the way. Yeah. And then start fucking read. worrying ah, about yeah, all that, that shit. I mean, I just love to go through an archives and just find the shit that I was like, you always want to know the answer to. The top, top secret, yeah, double, triple classified stuff. Like, get me one of them helicopters, a big gulp, and we're going to the Pentagon, and you're going to open every door. <laughs> <laughs> what site's locked? Bull, shit, open a door. Where's them, where's them <laughs> records gone? Oh, they were mysteriously destroyed during 9-11. When Convenient. That, you know. Uh, there's some shit coming out that Alex Jones was talking about today on Joe Rogan's podcast that um, Obama's been responsible for 65 grand's worth of male prostitutes at the White House. Um, all these, and there is public le- leaked emails during all the, one of these leaks that's come out. Apparently, hot dogs is a uh, is the code word for male prostitutes, and it's like we've ordered in some uh, deluxe hot dogs for you, and then like in one party they spent 65 grand on hot dogs, and he's like, how many hot dogs is that if it's actually hot dogs? And he's like, and why are people emailing like super fucking creepy about hot why, dogs? Why? What I don't get is why people email shit that can fucking come back and bite you in the ass. Don't know what I'm My neck does proper crack then. No, people clearly don't fucking get know. on fucking BBM. <laughs> WhatsApp's encrypted. Yeah. Do you want to fuck about? Uh, let's see some more of these fucking comments. Uh, do I think the biggest problem is not being able to finish chances? Of course it is. But, I mean, that's. That's a result of something. It's not this. Someone taking a piss there. My favourite film would have to be Saturday Night Fever. I hope so. Said no one ever. I mean, could you actually think of a John Travolta film that was good? Face Off was alright. Yeah, it's not, not, not bad point actually. John Travolta was good in um, People vs. OJ. Have you seen that? No. That was sick. Have you not seen that scene? Have you been watching Sneaky Pete? No. I started watching it. It's a Netflix thing. Um, it's the guy out of Ted, Judd, a creepy weirdo that kidnaps Ted. Yeah, yeah he's him. him. He was in the Friends and that as well. Remember. He's in all sorts of shit. It, it, Joe, Janine goes, "What's he been in?" I was like, um, "Everything." Like, have you ever seen anything ever? I was like, from Gone in sixty seconds to he's in everything. Um, but it's, I can't, I can't decide if it's amazing or boring. It, it's sort of becoming. It's quite convoluted, yeah. but basically. He starts off, he's in a cell with a guy, and this isn't a spoiler alert, you find this out in the first 10 minutes. He's in a cell, and his, his mate's just been, his cellmate's just been talking utter shit about his house and his family and where he grew up and all the rest of it. And when he gets busted out, he phones his brother like, yo, come pick me up. And he goes, you can't come back here. Like, 
you know, we're going to get killed if you come back here. So he decides to go to his cellmate's old house, because this guy's been gone for 20 years, um, where his grandparents live. And he cons them into believing that he's that guy. That's what it's called, Sneaky Pete. Oh, yeah, I think I actually seen it. After. Yeah, I might actually give that a watch. It's, it's decent. Yeah. I can't decide if it's amazing or a bit boring or if it's just going through a little bit of a, uh, a dip. Uh, America's a fucked up country led by a sociopath. Um, it's fucking mad, yeah, isn't it? Well, 9-11 yeah. was a lie. Well, it wasn't really a lie. There's lies about it, though, undoubtedly. Oh, without oh, a doubt. Oh, fucking you know, hell, we could go deep on 9-11, I think. In yeah. fact, we should do, shouldn't we? Uh, maybe not on 9-11. It's probably a little bit disrespectful. But maybe do it in the summer, get completely twisted and then just talk shit and just get so much wrong and have people going up and down. Yeah, arms. fucking Let's do that. kicking off. Um, any news on my bathroom about for Jackson? Nope. What about Ireland? Oh, yeah, so someone mentioned earlier, Would uh, I saw this. This was a question on Twitter, actually. Would we consider going to a game in the Middle East? I mean, I would. What's wrong with the Middle East? I don't know. So I'm just asking. Yeah, I'll fucking go. I, I think we've said I don't, we, we want to go anywhere. Um, there was a guy. I hope I'm not doing a spoiler alert here. Cause if he's not released his video yet, there was a guy called Jacob. He was a Polish YouTuber with 400,000 subs. He hit me up and was like, "Look, I'm coming to a game. Um, I need um, I need somewhere to get the ticket dropped off." So I got him to send him to our office. Um, and then when I met him yesterday, he was doing a challenge to see if he can get from Warsaw. To the march, watch the march, and then get back to Warsaw in 24 hours. Why not? That'd be doable. No. <coughs> You'd think. I guess it was doable. Um, so that's what he was doing anyway. So I uh, went and met that guy. Um, and I was saying, like, Yo, I wouldn't mind coming watching Ledger Warsaw, to be honest, because have you seen fucking Ledger Warsaw's Ultra stuff? Fucking hell. Yeah, you do want to, you've got There's to tons of places. Yeah, there's yeah, tons of places that I'm need like, to be going to see. Really, I'm not really asked about They're in Europa League. They've got Ajax. It'd have been great to go and see them against Ajax. Oh, yeah. We might draw them, though. So yeah. that might be an easy trip to arrange. Uh, his name, Zoo, says, Have I heard about the death tax change? Is that a British thing or an American thing? Um, who do United hate third most, like after Liverpool and Chelsea? After, Three, after two, Liverpool City. One. Sorry, yeah. Well, no, wait, what? So, yeah, let's get the question right. All right. Um, who do United hate third most after Liverpool what, what, and City? Well, you are as like like as a fan base. Do it on three. One, well, two, three. Arsenal. Leeds. Oh yeah, shit, Leeds. Uh, yeah, but <coughs> I would say yeah, Leeds would be, but Leeds aren't in the same league, so no. then it's not a rival. But Leeds I would say good. Arsenal. Yeah, probably Arsenal. Because I was thinking about the rather in the nineties was meant. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we hate Leeds. Keep Vera on you. Definitely. Next year they they're looking like they could be coming up. Playing some good stuff at the minute. Obviously, they got beat. They beat Blackburn. Owners are absolute knobs, aren't they? Yeah, beat Blackburn yesterday. But who, I, would, I was, I was, who would win at an arm wrestle between us? Fucking hell. <laughs> the uh, the I was thinking. What I was thinking is in terms of look. If you look at that top six, yeah, who would you least most like to win the league? Liverpool. Yeah. Then it'd be City. Yeah. Then it'd be Arsenal. Yeah. I couldn't give a fuck really about Chelsea. Agreed. And you know, Spurs. Spurs yeah. right, so that's why I'm saying. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. Actually, I think Arsenal, especially because Arsenal fans. Yeah, I hate. Have, have you ever met an Arsenal fan? Have you ever had to interact with an Arsenal fan? They make want to kick toddlers. Yeah, my my brother-in-law. He's an Arsenal <laughs> fan. He lives in Scunthorpe. Oh fuck you know. House and Slatton's done fuck all last couple of games. Very frustrating. If Matt had finished the two open goals, Stoke and Hull, we would be in top four. That's the fine margins. Uh, coming to Old Trafford soon, where do you sit and where's best in the Stratford end? Tier 2 is best in the Stratford end because of the big execs in the middle of it. That's where I am in the top of Tier 2. And it's happy days. Manchester is in a bleeding hurricane, I swear. Yeah, it's fucking it bare windy, windy today, yeah. Laura Biden Citizen, that is a good film. Right, let me just get... Because Farky said, oh, I'm watching Laura Biden Citizen last night. And I said, I hope you turned it off before fucking Jamie Foxx wins at the end. Because <laughs> I fucking hate that. <laughs> I was watching that film first time and I was like, yes, go on. Joe's another good feeling film. It. And Jamie Foxx, the slimy motherfucker. Joe's another good film, which is a similar Laura Biden Citizen sort of vein. It was the next three days? Yeah, yeah Russell Crowe. Yeah. yeah, I like that. That was a good one. Oh, fuck me. I, can't, I keep skipping all of these. Uh... Well, let's fucking... What time is it? Let's wrap it up. Uh, watch the team that Javi's on. What? Oh, the uh, in Middle East, and he plays in Abu, is it Abu Dhabi or Dubai, some of that. Is he, is he actually playing over there? Yeah. All right, cool. Great strike partnership ever. Well, you got to narrow that down a bit. What ever, ever? Whatever, ever. Forever's a long time. Um, blood boils at nine eleven. Corrupt twats. Um, jet fuel don't melt steel beams. 
Um, come to Australia for rugby league state got of paid origin. Out, got paid oh. out twice on a. Yeah, got paid twice on a on a bit of an insurance deal like you took out like three weeks before. On a, and he, and mysteriously on, mysteriously weren't there. Like he's there yeah. every day for breakfast. Yeah, and all his family wasn't there. Oh. Come on, son. The the Saudi Arabian family. Um, they Bin Laden's up. getting flown out and breaking the curfew of all planes being landed. If you don't think that's fucking fishy, I don't know what to say. That it, this there's some fishy shit. Oh, yeah, there's loads in it. Loads of it. Uh, yeah, someone's saying come to uh, Australia, whatever. <laughs> um, come to Australia for rugby league state of origin. I swear to God, that is on my bucket it's just list. Fucking too far. It is a long ass way. Can't be asked. And you've got spiders. And every fucking... Like, you've got nine of the top ten most poisonous snakes in the world. Who did Australia piss off? What the fuck? Did, why did you need... Why do you need so much shit that can kill you in Australia? If it's not the fucking sun, it's the fucking bugs. What's the matter with you? Uh, fuck lead, says Kafal. I like that. Uh, tweeted me a fixed list. I saw that, actually. Nice one. Um, would United fans hate Salford if Salford got promoted all the way to the Premier League? Salford aren't getting promoted all the way to the Premier League. Um, but it's an interesting point because there was a obviously a big derby at the weekend in non-league football. Salford yeah, played FC United. They won 3-0. Yeah, they? Salford won 3-0. Um, I don't know. I don't I don't know the crack with all of the, what's going on in the non-league. Greater Manchester, we've discussed this before a lot, that there's so many fucking clubs at this lower level. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm, I go to United and I go to City. I also go watch Salford every now and then. Everyone's kind of got like a, a couple of fingers in each pie. Some people go and watch Salford, FC, fucking Curzon Ashton. They love it, don't they? Mm. I, I, it's hard for them to say that they would be hated because there's no reason for them to be hated. No. It's like there's nothing in the history where... Not really, no. You know, where it's ever been on the same there's level. There's a tiny little part of the Salford spot that still wears orange like the original thing. And hate the class of ninety two for changing the kick pulls and everything. Yeah, but like that's not never going to be on that scale where. It, it, it's, well, it's not Glazers. It's not Cardiff. No, no. It's, you know, what they're doing is fantastic for Salford. You can't deny it. Fantastic for Salford City. Like they, they said, the fucking stadium's going to be finished by the end of the season or something, or the end of next season, or start of the next season. Yeah, like, and they, if you look, it's only smaller. Gary Neville tweeted out the prices for the whole of their league, and they've got the cheapest prices can't overall. Agree that. It's like seven quid, I think, to go in. Some of them games are like fifteen quid. Draws them was like sixteen or eighteen quid. No, Dave Pace, I am not paying that. No, I, no wonder you drive a panorama. Yeah, you motherfucker. I remember once I um, they used to have like a chain link panorama. fence up the back yeah. before they built the really rickety sort of entrances. I think when they, when he played Chesterfield, they, they literally threw up some block work to get did, people. Yeah, in. I remember they did well in the FA Cup, and yeah. Phil Pickens played for Chesterfield as well. <laughs> They, they had some chain link fence and I was like 16 or 15 or something like that and I leant against it and it sort of bent backwards so when you're 15 and 16 you start jumping on it don't you yeah and then Dave Pace pulled up and then Chase does <laughs> I think well I think interesting me interesting story about like where he got his money from allegedly maybe thoughts on train spotting have you seen it yet no are you going to see it probably watch it on on TV are you going to get it one of your dodgy box it's not dodgy, no, mate, it's not dodgy is it? Why, why do you there's, hate, no, there's nothing illegal. Why do you hate watching the cinema? Because they have to fucking go. <sighs> it's an effort. I am going to go cinema. I am going to go cinema this weekend. Actually, I think to watch uh, Sing. 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 S I N G. Kids film. Must, fucking hell, son. You've got a fucking kid. Got What's that kid? other one? Split. Jadine wants to watch Split. I um, want to watch that one with uh, Ben Affleck. Live by oh, Night. Yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. Ben Affleck don't do bad films, you know. Yeah, he's all right. Generally. But I just can't be asked going cinemas. It's in, you know what? I'm not really big into films anymore. The reason for it is because you can <clears> you can watch a ten part series and it can delve so much into characters and and like. I still like a film, man. Bit of a schedule. <laughs> just just yeah, for an hour a bit and then I don't have to think about it then ever again. Yeah, but you do though. I haven't got my unlimited card anymore. No. I, I I did I'm, do three in one night once. But that's not good. No, I did two. I've done two in a day. But that was just walking out of one cinema screen and going. That was iRobot. What did I watch? That? I watched. Um, wow. What was that one with um, Matt Damon in when he's like wearing the, the mad little suit? Elysium. That's the fella. That was a good film. There was three films that came out that weekend. Elysium was the last one that I watched, and because it was the last one I watched, it's the one I can remember the most. Can't remember the other two films, but it was good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Fury was one, I think, and I think. What are you doing, you asshole? Yeah, the dog's in here. I'm not just shouting at nobody. 
Um, I think 71, Fury and uh, Elysium all in the same thing here. That was good. 71 no. was a really good film, actually. What, the last time I went to cinema? I think it was to watch uh, Straight Out of Compton. Did I watch that with you? No. Who did I watch that with? I don't know. I'll be going. I'll be going to cinema again to watch the the two part biopic, just so we, you can hear the music in proper like surround sound. That's exactly. Yeah. I think I am going to go watch Train Spotting, but I think I might have to fucking crumble and go and watch um, S- Split. It's James yeah. McAvoy. Oh shit, that's supposed to be sick. It's M Night Shyamalan, Malam Malam, though, isn't it? So but it's it, going to be fucking. It, it, yeah. It's supposed to be like it's supposed to be mint in it, James McAvoy. I think he's a good actor. I didn't he was good he in was... Shameless. Shameless yeah. was shit once he left. Yeah, it was. Um, Robbie of Arsenal fan TV seems like a stand-up guy. Robbie's all right. It's the rest of them. They're all fucking nuts. Um, have I seen the Arsenal fan TV meltdowns? I've got internet, haven't I? Oh, I can't. I can't uh, be asked watching him, but that, I'm sure that guy says blood fam and all that just on purpose. I'm not sure. Why did FTD FTD change where they filmed the fan cams? Because we've pretty much spoken to everybody that goes that certain way, so we wanted to get fresher faces and newer people and different people to speak to and all the rest of it and. It was all we actually moved for the first time because they was building the Metrolink thing coming through there and they had all the pipe work ripped up so we couldn't go there so we just moved. Um, I don't know if we'll be going back. I think Chris likes it where we are now. End of watch. Remember that? Oh mate, that was good. We film. watched that together. Yeah, yeah. That's a sick that was film. a sick film. My uh, sick film. This is brother. He had it on at his house the other day. I was like, whoa, this is a sick film. I couldn't remember the name of it though. It's a great film. Yeah, I mean. Jake Gyllenhaal's not bad, you know. What's, oh, that, what's that Deja Vu style one that he did? It's not Deja Vu. Deja Vu's the one with Denzel. Yeah. But yeah. They, they, it's the same premise. Oh, it's on the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. What's it called now? That was a really good film. Yeah, that though. was a really good film. I like Jake Gyllenhaal films. I really do. I watched some bit of weird one with him just before. Uh, I watched. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. But it was a bit slow. Basically, his wife dies in a car crash or something. But he, he was never close to his wife anyway. And mm. he don't know who he, were, he, he kind of is. But he was all right. Um, Thomas says you English used Australia as a prison colony that's why it's even more twisted but that doesn't explain why it's like super conservative like crazy conservative uh, in Australia isn't it? it's madness um, let's find some more of these questions that Nightcrawler Jake Gyllenhaal was it remember that as well where yeah where he's the was... weird creepy video dude yeah. Source Code Source Code yeah good film um, have we watched South Southpaw Oh, it's good, great film. It's no DiCaprio, though, is it? DiCaprio's top of the tree. He's De- got to be top Demolition, of the tree. Demolition, that's what I watched. It was a bit, it's a slow burner, but it was, a, it was an alright film. Um, Prisoners what, as well, with Hugh Jackman. What dog is it? It's a black one. Um, can I tickle your bottom with beards? I think you're in the wrong podcast, mate. Um, who do I think will win between Khabib and Ferguson? I think Khabib, probably, but I think Tony Ferguson's got a real good chance of. Uh, of smashing him to be honest on the feet at least he can be caught um what 11 of one player versus another 11 of one player would you pay to see me can't oh right, i get you like 11 cantonards versus 11 cr7s 11 roy Keynes. Uh, no i see yeah yeah so 11 cantonards oh, versus right. so uh, if it was a one player yeah but he's gonna go and go roy Keane. <laughs> i don't know Keane versus rooney 11 of them interesting i don't oh, know at the peak wolf of wall street's yeah, quality it's really fucking long though super long like oh, like my ass went numb i think <laughs> it was a good film though Nightcrawler. he looks fucked up though in it doesn't he matthew mcconaughey it, when he yeah. lost lost all that weight for the dallas bias club he's not fucking yeah, come back to normal. yeah but uh, lincoln lawyer he was minting that matthew mcconaughey i haven't seen that one yet no 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 that's a sick film um fast and the furious We're talking about good films yeah oh, fuck me yeah, they pissed me off about that, that the, the longest runway scene ever I think it was Fast and Furious 5 and it was on the runway for about 15 minutes is that when it's a 10 second sprint oh, I don't know it was like oh, fuck off there's so the, the last one that um, thing he's in um, Paul what's he called oh Paul Walker that's the fellow the last one that he's in before he gets killed um, there's there's a thousand 
what the fuck moments. Oh, they're all like, they're all what the fuck. And you're like, anything that just... like the rocks in as well. What was the last one with the rock in where a fucking car park collapses and he uses it as a ramp and then he's he's firing. That this is what pissed me off. I can't watch a lot of military films because I just he go, fucking That's jumped bullshit. on. He jumped onto a tank or something. Like I was like, what the fuck is this? He, he was firing a minigun, which is an electrical signaled fucking weapon, and he was firing it from the hip that he'd pulled off a helicopter. I was getting power, Dwayne. <laughs> fucking idiot but he's like oh just sit back and enjoy the entertainment no <laughs> where's the fucking logistics in that yeah why is a car park collapsed and you've managed to jump it jump into another building handbrake turn it before you fall off I can accept a couple of what the fuck moments Joe you know was a bad one for it die hard for he jumped on a fucking ruined, jet ruined it Urgh. ruined it yeah. die hard one you're like Sick oh that's film. pretty good die I can hard. see that happening what do you mean it's yeah. pretty good it's no, amazing. I mean, I'm turning oh, like the, right, right, the level of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Die, like... die Hard 2, you think, yeah, you know, maybe snow. Yeah, you know I can see you'd Die Hard 3, yeah. yeah. Simon says, yeah, playing the games, yeah. Four, four, Why are you jumping on a fucking whoa, whoa, jet? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are you ruining it for? Why are you ruining it? <laughs> there was, and then he was like driving that fucking truck. It was just too many. Too, just relax, right? I don't, I've not got ADD. I can watch a film without needing a fucking explosion every five seconds. But that last Fast and the Furious with Paul Walker, Die Hard. Killed it. Text me out of it, and then I just sit here going, "Fuck you." I don't watch him because you think, because you think, right? What's what's the ultimate? All right, what's the ultimate trilogy films? Hmm. And Matrix. Yeah, Matrix. Star Wars. Fuck Star Wars. Back to the Future. Um, Which called Batman a trilogy series? The recent one. Yeah, that one. Back to the Future. Not as good as you remember it if you watch it recently. Fuck off. I watch them all the time. <laughs> all the time. All the time. They're sick. <sighs> what? Fuck off. You like Star Wars, but you don't like Back to the Future. I didn't say I liked it. I you did. Just, you went to Star Wars for a trilogy? I'm, I'm throwing suggestions at you. I'm not giving you my suggestions. Die Hard is a trilogy. The Bourne films. Bourne was excellent. But it, and there's been a, a recent one as well. Yeah, one... it weren't great. It was all right. It weren't great. But it's like, why you? Why you... Obviously, because they make money. That's the problem. <laughs> so just put, not just military action films, the end of Greece. <laughs> Does John Travolta film make you... Yeah. Serves you right. Toy Story 1, 2 and 3. Toy Story 1, 2 and 3, yeah. That's yeah good. Lord so, of the Rings, don't watch them, gay. Okay. Actually, anything that Pixar did has been pretty good. Have you seen Sausage Fest? Oh, my God. Oh, all I'm going to say is going to go, we nearly took Jaden. That's all I'm saying. It's on the air. Fuck Sausage yeah, Fest. Who calls a fucking film Sausage Fest? It's like it just makes me but it's like want to a, watch it. It's a Pixar film, and it's it's got yeah, uh, Seth Rogen in there. So you think, oh, it's gonna be like thingy. It's fucking raw, honestly. I, it's, it's the writing's not great. They've just gone for shock factor on everything, which they get. They definitely get it. But it's a bit mm. Hangover trilogy. No, Hang, what the you last want? couple was like how well, much money can we the, rinse the out of this? The last couple. Yeah. So yeah, it's the first one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, first yeah. No, two was decent. That... Three was. That... Are we doing this that... again? Are we doing this again? And and Alan became um, more and more obnoxious as it went on as well. He was like a hapless idiot in the first one. He was bad, just a yeah. straight prick in the new second. New Bad Boys one. film. Bad Boys one and two. Yeah. Deadpool yeah. was great. Yeah, that Deadpool was a good film. Sicario uh, is a good film. I've seen that. I like that. Really. No, good. I ain't seen that one yet. Bring out a new Bad Boys film. That's probably gonna be shit. Yeah. Did I say sausage? Yeah, sausage pies. You said Did sausage I... fest. Did I? <laughs> same fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, that's why it? I. Uh... But yeah. it means the same fucking thing, doesn't it? Sausage yeah. party. Star Wars. Well, no, right. get away with you, Star Wars. Fuck that. Uh, uh, films are top, mate. I can't yeah, remember. Films that. are top, but like Star Wars, isn't. I went and watched that. Have you ever watched a Bollywood Jane? movie? Fucking hell, yeah, mate. You ever come and go into my, my mother-in-law's house? It's Bollywood <laughs> Central in there. <laughs> Light bulb dancing. Nah, you want to see some over-the-top acting. Shadok Khan is the they man. Have, um, there's a, a restaurant near us that we go to, and they have a big screen in there, and they're just playing it on all the time. And mm. it's some mad shit. Like, have you seen the ones where they uh, they like flip a car? Yeah. And it'd be rolling, and the guy like pull them out as it's thinking. Like, they've, they've, come they've, on, they've, son. They've always got helicopters. That's like, yeah, pull up in my helicopter in, it, <laughs> in style. City of God, A I J C I Z serious. That's a great shout. Oh, John Wick out this month. I didn't see John Wick one, but the mm. new one looks pretty decent. Supposedly, Keanu Reeves has just been going off on some fucking mad, um, like Delta Force level training, just so he looks natural when yeah. he's doing it. Oh, fair fucking play! I love actors that go balls deep like that, like um, Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis goes off on one. You seen him in a boxer? Yeah. The guy thought he was a boxer. Yeah, well, that's what you want people who really get into it. When he like, did uh, Abraham Lincoln, like Christian Bale. 
Leonardo DiCaprio said you couldn't just sit with him like in between sets and be like surround your helicopters at Omar or anything like that it, you had to talk about the current events of like fucking 1828 or some shit <laughs> oh it's because they were that current no like yeah, you had, no, to, you had to pretend yeah, 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 you were talking in, you in, in character time, still yeah. mental there's, yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of Shutter Island was good Casino. Yeah, there's Sh- loads like that's the, that's that's where DiCaprio uh, Shutter Island and Inception coming out bang bang like that. Yeah. I mean Shutter Island, I still don't actually really fully know what what went down with that. You know, I, I would want to watch it again, but Mrs. won't watch it. Uh, Gangs of New York, mm, mm. Marvel, mm. Memento. Yeah, that was yeah, a Memento was a great one. Um, who do I want a biopic on? I think there needs to be more football ones. Like, there's not enough good football documentaries. Yeah, but it's like, how would you spin it though? Like music and stuff, and because there's a, there's a lot of things that go on, and it's publicized anyway, so you know a lot about it. Like, in who... the name of the Father's brilliant film. You're not fucking wrong. Um, when do we start making out? I, I think you are definitely on the wrong podcast, mate. Uh, do I like the Rocky films? They ended it well with the last Rocky because uh, no one counts though. five. Nobody counts five. Rocky five was an abomination. But the way they went on to Creed, it was good. <sighs> I watched Creed. And it's like, mm, it's not right. ah, it was good. Creed was good. Uh, Jamie Vardy movie. <laughs> <laughs> Gone to his head, that, it? Leon, that was a sick film. Yeah, Leon's an ace film. Children of Men, that was another decent film. That was, uh, what's he fucking called? Oh, I've not seen it. You have seen it. It's the one where there's no children get born ever again and like uh, someone ends up getting oh, pregnant or some shit. Yeah, what's it called? I don't know, I'm not seeing it. Shit, I'm going to have to IMDB it now. Yeah, fucking hell. Uh, you have seen it. I think we might watch it together. Yeah, sound. Um, him. Clive Owen. That's the fella. Well, you have seen this because you watched it with me. I'm sure you did. No, never. Either way, it's a good film. I think that'll do us anyways. So uh, thank you for joining us, everybody. Please make sure to subscribe. Uh, we're back again next. Is it might have changed, actually, for next week. Lone Survivor, very good film. Yes, yeah, good film. Uh, next week, we are down for the ninth, currently. Yeah, I'll be right. There's no, uh... There's no game, is there? Uh, goal one, two. <laughs> not as bad as it... Uh, on the face of things, actually. Not bad. It's a bit of an indulgence movie, anyway. It's not bad. Shit. Uh, right so anyways thank you guys for joining us as usual Um, make sure to subscribe give this guy a follow at Badham's 1983 and um, I am that old yeah he is that old we are old man so is he you're older than me though yeah by like less than 30 days it's a fact it is so thank you guys for joining us um so good chatting there as usual and um let me know in the comments when you'd rather see the podcast my grandma go if you want it tomorrow afternoon if you want it Saturday um, and uh, hopefully um, you'll enjoy what I'm bringing to you on Monday I've say, shown say, better little scenes say, so say now so he's got to stay up all night and edit it oh that one's done that yeah. one I just have to release I need a thumbnail and it can go um, what did you think of the Munich thing yeah, you've no, seen so good. far yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, it's very poignant it's nice it's, you've got a music right in the background obviously your granddad sat there so it's it's nice to hear it from someone who's not retold the story or you've not heard it the story like mm-hmm all the time and you know exactly what's happening it's a different perspective of it of someone who was like 15 at the time and uh you know getting to see what he was up to the the difference in terms of today and now as well in terms of like access to media yeah and also just like yeah the sheer like wow, uh, what, fr- what the three hours three hours that took me today with my granddad recording mm. that um it's gonna take me i don't fucking know how many hours to edit it um i'm learning new techniques as well for i'm i'm gonna try and desaturate it and then highlight all the red just for a, a visual effect yeah. uh i'm going balls deep on this this is the most produced video i have ever done so i hope you guys will really help me out when i launch this on monday it's going to go up at probably at eight o'clock monday morning or seven o'clock monday morning so please help me out and share it everywhere you can um I, i've got a target of getting this to a hundred thousand which i know is a massive i've only had one video hit a hundred thousand so for me to say I wanted to do a hundred thousand. I've done two hundred and seventy videos, I think, and uh, only one of them's got to a hundred thousand. But I really think that uh, with your guys' help, I can get another one to a hundred thousand. So Monday, look out for that on Monday morning because I'm putting a fucking load of work and cash into uh, making this. So uh, that's it for tonight. Thank you for joining us, everyone in the comments. Nice one. Um, subscribe to us on iTunes if you'd prefer to listen to this um, in your car or at work or anything like that. 
And um, we'll be back next week, same time, same place, probably a little bit late as usual. Um, where have I put the mouse gun? Where have I put the mouse? I don't know. It's sat on here. I can't even see it. Over there. Oh, it's there.